Training camp starts in two weeks. And Alabama State Hornet football head coach Joseph Cooley just collected the newspaper that revealed the preseason 119 teams before the start of season three, AKA the 2007 season. The first thing he did was look down that list to see who was in the top 10. The next thing he did was to reveal who was in the top 25. No surprise, he didn't find Alabama State in any of them. Then he continued to look down the list, looking in the 30s, looking in the 40s. Still no sign of the Alabama State Hornets, despite the fact that we had a pretty decent offseason in the 60s. Then finally he looks at the 70s and there they are ranked as the 74th team in the country. As Joseph Cooley continued to look at that newspaper, he saw that the Tennessee State Tigers are favored to win the MEAC Sun Belt while they have Howard finishing in dead last. Meanwhile, over at the Max Swag, they have the Alabama State Hornets coming out the West and the Texas Southern Tigers coming out of the East. The next thing Joseph Cooley did was look down the preseason All-American list. And he was not surprised to see Justin Chambers on that list. After the freshman season he had, head coach Joseph Cooley was expecting even bigger things from Justin Chambers in season three, AKA 2007. Then he saw Roddy Watts was on the list and he was like, oh yeah, we may have us a diamond in the rough once it's time for him to go to the NFL draft. He saw Marcus Novak and he saw, saw Matt Spencer. As he continued to look down the list, he saw Mark Baker. And he was like, yeah, the HBCUs are finally getting the respect they deserve. Maybe not as schools as a whole, but definitely as players. Then he saw Blake Rollins. The man at Strong City is back for his sophomore season and he was named as a first team All-American. Next, he looked at the all swag list and he saw Justin Chambers, which was no surprise. Jason White was named as a first team all swag preseason player, but then he surprisingly saw Andrew Cope, the man that only caught six receptions all last season for four touchdowns. Roddy Watts was no surprise as we continue to look down the list. Joseph Cooley saw that Marcus Novak is no doubt getting the recognition he deserves as a first-team All-American and a first-team All-SWAC player, as well as Matt Spencer. So he knew then that he had two players he had to look for once the season started. Blake Rollins, of course, we have some big plans for Blake Rollins. But that was it for the first team. So then Joseph Cooley starts looking for the second team. He sees that Bobby Newton is a second team all swag player for, for preseason along with Andrew Williams which is another surprise considering him and Jason White drop a lot of passes. As Joseph Cooley continued to scroll down his list he was starting to ponder his depth chart. He wanted to make sure he put out the best team possible at the beginning of season three. He didn't want to come out this season like he did the first two seasons. Then he saw that Cal Gray and Colin Robinson were named second team all swag. He was very excited. Then he saw the schedule. And he saw he had to go up to Morgantown for the first game of the season. Next, he saw that North Carolina A&T was on the schedule followed by Prairie View. Then a trip to Tuscaloosa to play on the Crimson Tide of Alabama. Then down to Tallahassee to play the Florida a and Rattlers. Back at home against the Bethune Cup and Wildcats. A team that always gives us problems. Then at Mississippi Valley State. At Southern down in Baton Rouge. Another open week. And then we go down to Jackson, Mississippi to take on the Jackson State Tigers. Back at home versus Grambling. And then the season finale versus the Arkansas Pine Bluff Lions. So as you can see, for the first time in this series, there will not be 
a Magic City Classic in Birmingham. Well, it's not in Birmingham, but against the Alabama A&M Bulldogs. Now, as he looked down his depth chart, he saw that Bobby Newton would be the best option as far as being the starting quarterback. Bobby Newton returns with a lot to prove this season. In his true freshman year, he threw for just over 2,000 yards along with 25 touchdown passes, but his efficiency was absolutely terrible. Nothing else much has changed as far as the quarterback position. As Kyle Gray will continue to be our option quarterback, but we will give TJ Thomas more action in case something happens to Bobby Newton. The depth chart looks like this. Peter Burnett as of now is our best quarterback, but based off the ratings on the arm strength, Bobby Newton has the better accuracy, along with TJ Thomas backing him up. So Peter Burnett will be red shirting this season. Next, we have the running back spot. And oh, what excitement it was from Joseph Cooley as he heard that the man all the way from VA, Justin Chambers, was named to the Heisman watch list. Oh, would you look at this? Uh-oh. Josh House, South Carolina. Jack Young, Texas Tech. Justin Chambers is on the Heisman watch list. Y'all better watch out. Them Hornets coming. Dwayne Jarrett is back for his senior season. And that looks like Chad Todd, the quarterback for Texas. Oh, man. Justin Chambers is on the Heisman watch list right now. Yeah. It's going to be a hell of a season. So, as you know, Joseph Cooley likes to run at least three running backs deep. But in this case, he was set up for two. So, Keon Peterson, Leon Henderson, and Billy Logan have all been hit with the red shirt logo this season. Gene Singleton, the LSU transfer that Joseph Cooley is so excited about, will not be available until season four. So, until then, Chambers and Gaston will run the fort. We also decided to red shirt Edwards, our fullback, but everybody on campus is absolutely hyped about Kevin Scott, the Ohio State Buckeye transfer, finally being eligible to play in season three as he gets ready to start fall camp. But in other news, Andrew Williams has had a lot going on for him since the season ended. His grades have been slipping. He's been caught up in that social life with all the women and it's causing him his spot on the football field. So with that said, we made the decision to redshirt Andrew Williams so that he could focus on his schoolwork and not focus on football. So Andrew Williams will be redshirting along with Bob Smith. So now Kevin Scott is running the spot at the wide receiver position at number one. Jason White and Tim Brown will be backing him up. Georgia Bulldog transfer Marcus Williams. He won't be eligible to play until season four, but we're very excited to have him on the squad. Not nothing much has changed at the tight end position, but the offensive line will look like this. We're going to redshirt Bobby Ross. Let him put on some weight. Let him get his ratings up. At left guard, Jesse Smith is back. He will be backed up by Drew Woods. We tried the red shirt Billy Jackson, but we thought it was best if he stayed on for depth. Wayne Cumbie will be red shirt next center. On the defensive side of the ball, we made the decision to red shirt Carey and Davis so that they can improve on their game, they can get their weight up. But true freshman Billy Koch will be running the fort at left end while Mike Considine will be running things on the right side. Scott McFarlane, the true freshman from Vicksburg, Mississippi, will be starting along with Williams at the defensive tackle spots. We've decided to redshirt Davis and Washington. The linebacker positions were pretty complicated. Josh Smith, the one-star recruit, fell all the way down to the depth chart along with Roman Horn. 
Jesse Moore, the Mississippi State transfer, will be sitting out, but as you can see, he's already at 80 overall. While Lawrence Martin and Jamal Sykes, they will be seeing a lot of action this season. The middle linebacker spots are just disappointing. Blake Stovall still hasn't made any type of improvement, but based on the rest of the middle linebackers and Frank and Pope, we might as well keep Blake Stovall at the mic for now until we can find somebody better or hopefully Blake Stovall just improves his game. The secondary will be a little different this season. Blake Rollins will be starting at strong safety. We're going to move Colin Robinson down at the nickel spot along with Cal Gray. With Cal Gray's speed and Colin Robinson's ability to knock people out, they should be very dangerous coming off the edge at the nickel back spots. The guy that we have starting at free safety this season will be Josh Sisk. He's a 6'1", 184 pound, free safety, true freshman out of Pritchett, Alabama, down in the Mobile area. His 38 inch vertical and his 4'5", speed should stand out along with the potential and the discipline. We're respecting Josh Sisk to do some quick growing in just his true freshman season. Cedric McNeil and Jason Moore, they're still our starting cornerbacks. Probably the best duo Alabama State has had in a while. So here are the true freshmen you need to watch out for. Jamal Sachs from Dothan, Alabama and Tim Brown from Union Springs, Alabama. Both of these players have the potential to make an immediate impact fresh out of high school. Tim Brown, with the absence of Andrew Williams, will be playing a lot in the slot. Jamal Sykes, we expect him to hold it down at that right linebacker spot. Lawrence Martin is another guy that we're looking to make a big impact for us this season. Out of Safety Harbor, Florida, what better way to make your presence known on campus than to wreak havoc on offensive players? So join us next time. As we start season three, we travel up to Morgantown to take on the Mountaineers of West Virginia. Peace.